HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. Today's program is proudly brought to you by Whole Foods Market. Visit WholeFoodsMarket.com or download the Whole Foods Market app to learn more and find the store nearest to you. You're listening to Heritage Radio Network. We're a member-supported food radio network broadcasting over 35 weekly shows live from Bushwick, Brooklyn. Join our hosts as they lead you through the world of craft brewing, behind the scenes of the restaurant industry, inside the battle over school food, and beyond. Find us at heritageradionetwork.org. Welcome to the Grape Nation, your weekly wine journey. We're on the road in Hyde Park, New York, at the Culinary Institute of America. We will talk to Professor Michael Weiss about the CIA wine program and also speak with one of his students. I'm your host, Sam Ben Ruby. Stay with us for the Grape Nation on the Heritage Radio Network. We bring wine to the people. Michael Weiss is the professor of wine studies and serves as the Charmer Sunbelt Group Endowed Chair for Wine and Spirits at the CIA. He's a certified wine educator, holds an advanced level certificate from the Court of Master Sommeliers, is a wine judge, journalist, and a James Beard award-winning author of two books, Wine Wise and Exploring Wine. Welcome to the show, Professor Weiss. Thanks for inviting me. Before we get started, I just want to frame who we're talking to. So tell us a little about you. Give me a little background on your journey in life and wine that brought you here to CIA as a professor of wine studies. Uh, My grandfather was fighting in the French resistance in World War II. And uh, when his troop was captured, his life was saved because he was a chef. And he was eventually able to come to Montreal with my mom. And uh, I always... So Loved you're him. Canadian? Yeah, okay. I'm a Montrealer. Okay. I now have an American citizenship as well. And so uh, my grandfather was a kosher chef, and when he moved to New York, I used to fly Air Canada Youth Pass, $18.50 each way, to work on weekends and work bar mitzvahs and weddings and things like that, front of the house. And I wanted to cook, but he thought it would be better for me to be front of the house. And then I started developing my, my love for wine, my appreciation for wine. What so? What was that moment? I mean, well, you just realized front of the house wine. Yeah, I used to do a lot of table side cooking, you know, carving things at the table and doing uh, cafe brulot and things like that at places like Arno's in New Orleans and then other fine dining restaurants. And I thought wine was much more of an infinite study and. It really intrigued me, you know, the combination of the, the science of wine and right. the, uh, the romance of wine and, the, and taste interaction. And so I started working, and as a maitre d' said, I want to run the wine program. And then I got jobs as a sommelier at places like um, the private club of the, the Forge, the Club 41 in Miami Beach. Great place. Arno's in New Orleans. Famous. 
Yeah, I put together a wine program at the place called the Colony in Longboat Key, Florida. And so uh, I just enjoyed learning about wine. It's an infinite study, just like the study of music or food or many other things. Well, you also are a student of music, right? I try my best, yeah. yeah. Play a, a little great guitar. Way to relax. All right, so, so you've been in wine service for a while. You, you have your chops down. All right, tell me about the wine program at the Culinary Institute of America, which you've been involved with since? 30 years. I finished this month. 1987 makes 30 years. Yes, and I've had over 18,000 students, and it's really been an honor to be able to interact with them and to share my passion and knowledge about wine. Uh, we have to prepare our students for the public restaurants, so they have to know how to describe the flavors of wine to our customers, how to uncork and serve it, and how it pairs with food. And, you know, for me also to prepare our students for life in general. So is that a course description? Partially? I mean, those well, are the we, things we, the that First, we start off with viticultural and vinicultural service and tasting, and we go on to the New World, studying uh, California and the Southern Hemisphere. Canada, and then we go on to the classic wine regions of Europe uh, within France, Italy, Spain, Portugal. And I can taste them on Greek wines, which I love very much, or German wines, even without testing them on those countries. Right. What, um, so you'll immerse into a country or a region for a few classes a class you'll taste through all Unfortunately, of that. Unfortunately, it's only 3 weeks, but you know, ah, uh, so you have to rush through everything. I don't know if it's Not a rush. I don't know if it's a rush, but it's important for me is again taste interaction. For example, you know, it can really affect the way our future chefs or sommeliers understand how acidity, for example, can lower acidity, saltiness or sweetness, the perception of that, how flavors interact. So we do a lot a lot of in-class tastings. Uh, we'll be doing one in a couple days with fresh goat cheese versus aged pecorino and some finocchio sausage, green versus brown olives. That hands-on experience seems to really be more important for our students than just book learning. So I guess the obvious question is, is there more sensitivity to what you're doing with food in mind because – of what the Culinary Institute is and the students and what they're going out and doing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Wine's like play. you said, you know, you're tasting different cheeses. I mean, that's practical for going out there. Yeah, I think Wine's Place is, is usually at the table with food. It is food for me. And, of course, you could have right. an aperitif. That can be pleasant. But the emphasis really is on taste interaction. And more and more of our students are interested in making a career you know, in wine, and we have advanced wines classes we offer here at school, advanced beverage certificate. So students really get the bug, and they also get the bug when they realize that working in a kitchen it may not be as financially uh, positive as working from right. the house if right. you have wine knowledge. But even for those people working in the kitchen, understanding taste interaction from wine makes them better chefs or better people working in baking and pastry, savory or sweet uh, goods. Right. So two questions. Just, you, you alluded to it a little. What, what degrees and certifications are available? Let's stay with just wine. It's necessary to pass wines class in order to be able to work in our public restaurants in front of the house. Okay. And so that's my job. And I've never taught the advanced classes. I love seeing the light come on with our students you know, when they um, start off from ground zero and suddenly start being able to smell uh, different aromatics in wine and understand uh, how, how that interrelates with food. Or I like trying to make the cultural connections of having tapas with sherry or having, you know, a white truffle risotto with Piedmontese wines. But you've taken the events uh, wines class. Perhaps you could say a couple words. Oh, well, I mean... So, uh, Jason, yeah. Jason is currently a student, or are you graduating? I am currently a bachelor's okay. student. Okay. All right. So, tell us a little about uh, the wine program. Well, coming into this wine program, I had little to have none uh, wine knowledge pre previa. Uh, my parents basically would give me, like, Arbor Mist Wine Zinfandel and say this was good <laughs> wine. I mean, granted, you know, 
to some people, it is good wine. But coming in here to the wines program, uh, not knowing anything, you start to gain a deeper understanding standing for the complexity that is is wine and you understand that it's not just necessarily something that you drink but it's something that you every bottle has a story to tell there's a big history there is a story behind each bottle of wine that you go through it's not necessarily picking out fruit notes in it or picking out how high the acidity is this wine but i really look at the story of it who was the vintner who uh made this wine where uh, was it made in the world? Uh, what does the label have to tell me? And everything. Uh, it really like enlightened me that it was like doing a history class, but you got to drink wine. Right. <laughs> so are you doing a degree in wine? Uh, yes, I am doing a concentration where I went out to Napa Valley, California, and was taught under Master Sommelier Professor Bath, or Robert Bath, who uh, basically showed deductive tastings, uh, went into very, very intense lectures of all the wine regions throughout the world, and also was taught under Professor Christy Dufo, who taught about wine service and also spirits and distillants. So let me mention that the CIA has locations in New York, New Hyde Park, which we're broadcasting no, from. Hyde Park. Hyde, Hyde Park. Park. New Hyde Park. Is that Roosevelt? <laughs> hey, that screwed up. Uh, you have Hyde Park. You have Napa, the Culinary Institute with the Greystone. Greystone campus. Um, and you have San Antonio, Texas. And now there are classes Singapore. in Singapore, right? And also Italy, too. Italy, okay. Yeah. Where, so where the, is that one located again? Boya? It's in Apulia. 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 So just quickly, so as a wine student, you can go out to California to the program there. And that do a correct. semester there. That is correct. Okay. Um, so the program is as much about wine, and you mentioned, as about the business. So the preparation, you described the class a little um, about viticulture and tasting in regions. But I think the real preparation is to balance the student with the knowledge of wine and I guess fairly the knowledge of the business of where wine is served, which is restaurants. or Is that fair? Yes, yeah, so how they can apply it uh, not only for personal pleasure as they dine. And, you know, uh, you know we always, I always talk about in our book, uh, wine-wise, the, the wines that I drink under $25 a bottle with my wife, Jenny, what Professor Colpan, my colleague and the PM and co-chair uh, of the Charmer uh, seat, well, we drink under $25 because wine doesn't have to be expensive to give you pleasure. And there are special occasion wines we will have that are more pricey. But, you know, two of the biggest things we try to stress, Professor Colpan and I believe, is, uh, number one, the most important piece of information on the label is the name of the producer, their integrity. And number two, when you go off the beaten path and you have lesser-known grape types or areas, you get some really interesting wines that are not just commercial manipulated wines, but wines that have some integrity and right. have some typicity. Right. There's a whole natural wine movement, and there's an old sustainable Well, you know, not just in the- terms of organic. I'm talking about instead of wines being made in a manipulative fashion in one million you know, right. liter stainless steel tanks, wines that are crafted but happen to be lesser known and offer great values. And I, they, you know, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, they raise cattle that way, and they also have free-range cattle. They have wine where it's factory and additives, mega purple, and there's wines you know, you, where the craft is. I think you understand completely yeah, what I'm talking But I, I want to ask you something because you said that a lot of your students come in with really no knowledge of wine, and you know that's a very refreshing thing for you to start and talk about it. When you say the most important thing on a bottle of wine is the producer, if you know nothing, what do you tell the guy who knows nothing? He's looking at... A name. He doesn't... Well, you start off with keeping a small logbook of the grape types that you seem to be attracted to or the areas, and you note the producer. And then you'll see over time that certain producers will continually be on your favorite list. I mean, we prepare our students for level one of the Court of Master Sommeliers or the Certified Specialists of Wine examinations to the point of understanding 
uh, grape types and their flavors and personalities or attributes and uh, major regions, but we do simply do not have the time to go into the producers right. other than talk about them while we taste those wines. So right. I make it a point to include, you know, wines from the winemakers who I really believe in and whose wines I buy and try to feature in class. So I think in in reality, if you take any interest in wine, you have to put a little time into it, whether you're a student or somebody who's interested, you know, to do a little research, find out what you like, get familiar with producers. Like you said, keep a logbook. It's a labor of love, though, because yes. it's not like I've been teaching wine for 30 years and have 20 years' experience in restaurants, and after 50 years, it's not like I'm there. Right. I have to be humble because each year... There's new appellations in uh, Italy, France, California, new AVAs. There's new producers coming on, new techniques, new methods. It's all part of the, the joy of being involved in wine. And you said yourself that you have a wine cellar. So just knowing at what point to open up that bottle of wine that's going to give you pleasure. Like I, I recently opened up a bottle of 1995 Barca Velha Portuguese red wine, mm. and it's still amazingly powerful. 24, 23 years later. Yeah, and I, I have a few bottles that I'm going to wait longer for that wine. I have, you know, so you're drinking it's the right wine. It's great to have right multiple time. bottles of something you open that was great exactly. so that you know you can go back to it. Right? Exactly, exactly. And so, and I like older white wines as well. I think there's a. An idea that uh, people in, who love wine as much as me only drink big, powerful, expensive red wines. But when I came back from Bordeaux and I studied there two years ago, I brought back old white Pesac Léonion. Mm. You know, that was really yep. something special for me. Yeah. That is a white Bordeaux. Mm-hmm. Yes. Semillon. Semillon. Which a lot of people and... don't think of mm. Bordeaux when they think of white. They age really, really well. Yeah. Really, really they're, they're highly ageable. One last thing about wine and the business of wine when you prepare people to go into the business i mean wine is a pretty important part of the bottom line of a restaurant right i mean nowadays when you look at the best restaurants yeah when i judge wine wine programs very often 25 to 40 cents on every dollar contribution is wine and so we talk about that and tremendous and how there's no one perfect wine list it has to relate to your concept I agree with that. Do you have the opportunity to bring in guest speakers? Do you have people? All the time. And that's really exciting when people meet uh, somebody who actually crafts the wine. So uh, recently we had Roberto Bava, who is not only a winemaker but a chocolatier from Piemonte. And we uh, very often try to bring in uh, Fred Frank from the Finger Lakes, um, we have uh, we've had uh, Carolyn Krug here from Krug Champagne. Uh, we've had um, the Greek wine producers represented by uh, All About Greek Wines. Um, it's, uh, Adrian Bridge from Taylor Fladgate. The list goes on and on. Great people. Chris Benziger from Benziger Winery. Great people. Uh, Joy Sterling, practically a sister of mine by now, I hope, really? from Iron Horse. Wow. Great sparkling wines, right? I yeah, I, that's one of my favorite wineries in the world. And again, it's, it's, very often wines are a reflection of the people who craft them. And you really feel the uh, integrity and the, and the elegance of those people. Places like Iron Horse and right. Cake Bread and Schaefer in California, just to name a few. Those, yeah, Robert Sinski uh, has been on the program. He's a natural winemaker out of California, yeah. which you don't get a lot of. And the cake breads have invested a lot in terms of wine and food education. and uh, Yeah, it's an iconic so there's, brand there's, out there. It is. All right, let's talk about, Jason, this is where you could come in and help us a little. Let's talk about the day-to-day wine program, program at, at the CIA. What's, quickly, what's a typical day in your program? Are we talking about the AOS program or the BPS program? Well, explain what each is, All right, so and then the, I'll answer that. There is the uh, associate's wine pr- class, which everybody has to go through, baking and culinary student. Right. And then there is the BPS advanced wines program, which is a concentration or a minor. All right, so hold on there for a second. So the AOS, 
you, that's Professor what I Weiss, teach. you you are exposed to the student body, and you drop a little wine knowledge on everyone. Not a little. They have to study at least three hours a night, if not four hours, to be successful. And my class in the morning runs from 7.30 in the morning till noon, and Professor Colpan's class runs from 12 till uh, 6.30, uh, no, from 2 to 6.30, pardon me, from 2 to 6.30. And uh, only our school in Cornell have a dispensation from the governor to allow students under 121 to legally taste wine. Right there, your uh, admission should go up on that pitch. It wasn't even a pitch. If I knew that then, right. now, <laughs> You'd whatever. have an even bigger seller. All right, so that's the – so, Jason, that's why I asked. The AOS program – exposes the student body to what you describe as a rigorous um, background in wine. Then the other program is the... Is the uh, Advanced Wines program. Okay. And that's where you get sent off to Napa Valley, California, and you get If to you're go, in that program, you have to yeah. head out to Napa? Uh, I know that is a, uh, a choice. I don't know if they do the Advanced Wine program Usually here at the school. Napa. Okay. Yeah. And Napa is the Greystone CIA facility. That is correct. Okay. And what happens there? So tell me a little about that program. So uh, our advanced wine program, uh, the, cla- the advanced wines class is actually only held on Fridays. Uh, and that is about a five-hour class of Professor Robert Bath going through uh, the wine region that he picks for today day to day so when we got out there we obviously started out with learning about napa valley right uh, for about three hours then we would go to sonoma county and then pretty much the rest of the united states hitting oregon washington new york then coming back the neck coming back next friday learning about argentina and chile and just vice versa uh the other part of the class is, is it just the americas it's all it's all new world and old new world, world and old world. Okay. But we go new world first, then we jump into old world, and then the other section, other classes that is in the class is not is a sommelier class, sommelier class, which is tasting, which is uh, teaching you the techniques of uh, wine service, uh, proper glassware, proper serving utensils, ever uh, just basically table service then you also have you learn about distillers and bartending skills uh you have to do uh deductive tastings with spirits also on top of the deductive tastings of wine and periodically throughout the class on the advanced wines class uh professor bath will send you right out of the room he'll pour two wines you come in, and you don't even know what. We're doing this straight blind, and he makes us go over the grid, which is the uh, – he has made a grid kind of based off the Court of Sommelier's uh, deductive tasting grid. And you'll go through that and basically try to limit, try to figure out what that wine is and where did it come from and what the grape type is. So the program in Napa is how long? The program in Napa is 15 weeks long. 15 weeks and where are you in the program? I will be graduating here in December. I am so the end of the year. Yes, I am one semester away. Okay. Um, what are your intentions after you finish the program? Uh, right now, I have a uh, a food and beverage director who was also my previous mentor chef, who uh, I worked with on an internship, and then actually for a year in the industry at the Red Lion Hotel Company. Uh, I decided to come back. Is that to Massachusetts? Me. That was in Wash- Spokane, Washington. Spokane, okay. Uh, There's one in Massachusetts. Stockbridge. <laughs> yeah, that also is a sister company to the Blantyre, a great place. That's right. Yeah. So what we're trying to do with that company is go more to a farm and table thing, but that's just a... It kind of butt heads with the corporation, and we kind of left because okay. they weren't going to go in the vision that we thought we were going to go in. So I decided to go back to school and pursue a uh, career in management, and I kind of like chose the wine, uh, advanced wines program, because I was like, I really like the wines program here in AOS, and I wanted to really like uh, just branch on that a little bit more. I never thought that after I came back, I'd be going for my level one sommelier certification and passing and potentially getting a uh, job, having a job offer in Breckenridge, Colorado, 
Not added, a bad uh, place Beaver, to wind up. Yeah, Beaver Creek Resort to uh, be a restaurant sommelier. Not a bad thing. There. So you want to go for further certification? Yes, I do. Okay. Professor, what kind of outreach, placement, alumni involvement is there to the student after they leave? Well, first, um, I'd like to mention that uh, we have a lot of support from a local winery that really makes fabulous wines called Millbrook. I know Millbrook. A lot of um, our students go out on day trips there and have been hired to work at Millbrook and been um, got some experience, firsthand experience, either in the vineyards or in sales or in management um, through this local winery. And, and it's um, not far from here. Yeah, it's about 40 minutes. Isn't that Dyson really, who bought William Dyson. Selim in California? Yes, and the William Selim wines are fabulous, fabulous as well. There's not only the Pinots, but the Zinfandels. And, and the Shards. And the Shards, yeah. So uh, what I do, and Professor Colpan does, is we very often will counsel the students. This is Professor Colpan okay. who's just entered the room, and we've worked together for 20-odd years together and have a strong relationship and luckily see eye to eye on how the program should be uh, run. But uh, we talk about uh, possible certifications such as uh, the Society of Wine Educator, Quarter Master Sommeliers, Masters of Wine, and um, the uh, advanced program here at school, and you know courses uh, within New York City and elsewhere. We talk about different professions you can get with wine knowledge. And how it's a lifelong um, journey, a positive journey to stay humble, keep learning more and more about wine. And it's not a chore to be tasting and in no. good company and having good no. wine with good foods and good conversation. That's certainly not hard work. And you, you said you do taste in the class. Yes. Do you... We usually taste between eight and ten wines, depending on the situation. And we also do uh, pairings uh, with wine and food, so... sometimes putting two wines at the same time. And I'm a particular big fan of sparkling wines and fortified wines, so we very well often will have a, a dessert with a fortified wine and a sparkling wine or a main course with a still wine and a sparkling wine. A great presentation to show. They what, work in different comp- ways. Right. They work in different ways. So what if you're a pastry student and you have a precision decorating class and you just had eight, ten glasses of wine? How no does one's that had, no one's had eight, ten glasses of wine in terms of consumption because they're forced to spit the wine oh, okay. in class. All right. So there's your answer. Yeah, you know, and there's zero tolerance for driving. And and the, the, the one time of that course. we do consume the wine in the, when we have a wine and food lunch or wine and food dinner, then we monitor very carefully how much they're poured. And we talk to them a lot about alcohol responsibility. Sure. And I think our students are, are quite mature as they approach that. Great. Um, All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to do a feature we do every week called The Wine List. I want to get your take on a few things. Sure. Today's program is proudly brought to you by Whole Foods Market. Whole Foods Market believes in seeking out local, fresh, and seasonal food and in supporting local farmers, makers, and the community as a whole, economically and agriculturally. Whole Foods Market believes in food that is vivid and colorful, fresh and full of nutrients, Food that connects you to your body, the seasons, and to nature. Food that helps you do more, sleep better, and wake up happier. Found in over 400 locations throughout the United States, Whole Foods Market only sells food that meets their standards, which means no artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, or sweeteners, ever. Whole Foods Market believes in real food. Visit WholeFoodsMarket.com or download the Whole Foods Market app to learn more. All right, we're back. We're back with Professor Michael Weiss. We're broadcasting from the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park in New York. And I want to subject Professor Weiss, and maybe we'll get a little uh, few answers from Jason, um, subject him to our wine list. So it's a bunch of quick questions. Don't peek. Sure. All right, um, what are you drinking now? When I say that, what are you toying with, experimenting, trying, seasonal? Uh, well, white wines uh, from New York have never been better. Uh, Rieslings, our cats at Telly's, uh, Santorini from Greece, uh, Al, uh, Alvarino uh, from Portugal, Gadeo from Spain, uh, Muscadets and Vouvray from the Loire, and my personal favorite is uh, Alsace Rieslings. I love the, the structure of those Alsace Rieslings. All right, and, that's that's. That's a mouthful. Jason, what about you? 
A couple um, of wines you're drinking now, tasting, Big, experiment. Finger Lakes region. I actually just went up there, uh, passed for 4th of July weekend, had a uh, a bourbon barrel aged ice fine Riesling, oh boy. 2015, and Jesus. it was amazing. Was it? Uh, he bought the bottle immediately. Who was and, the maker? I can't remember okay. at the point. And I'll then, follow up with you on that. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, there was a uh, Midsummer Cellar uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, 2014 from Napa Valley. Uh, he is the son of Heights Cellar, and he decided to branch off from what his uh, dad was doing to make his own little small wine. What's the name of the label? Uh, Midsummer Cellar. Oh, it's Midsummer Cellar. Yep, I'm sorry. Midsummer Cellar. You did say that. Cabernet Sauvignon. I thought you were describing the. Uh... There's two. There's actually three different lots he does. Uh, one's in St. Helena, California. One's in the Napa Valley, and then one is also in Sonoma County. Okay, sounds good. So you're just All doing right. whites for this? No, no. But just, we're going to move on. Give me your favorite wine and food pairing. Do you have a classic? Yeah, I mean, am I, am, you know, what comes to mind for me is, is caviar or oysters with uh, Blanc de Blanc Champagne, uh, whether it be from from the Champagne region or from Iron Horse or, you know. So my good. genetic code is smoked salmon and Riesling. Good ones. I love that. Good ones. Um, Jason, quick. Just probably something simple, like a uh, bolognese with a uh, primitivo. Okay. All right. Do you have a best favorite wine restaurant and or bar up around here in New York? Do you have a place that resonates with you? Yes, I got married at a place called uh, New World Home Cooking. It's Where's just on that? The, it's on the border of Woodstock, just on the border of, the border of Woodstock and Saugerties. And Still they have, around? Oh, yes. It's been around for quite a while. And they and have wine very, service? It's very, very creative, and their wine list features lots of organic and off-the-beaten-path nice. wines. And Give me the name again. New World Home Cooking. New World Home Cooking. Yeah. Woodstock? Yeah. It's Saugerty. Saugerty. Board of Woodstock. Okay. Yeah. All right, Jason, you got a place you love? Uh, well, there is this... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to go through my head right now. Uh, quickly. Quickly. Uh, I'm going to have to go with... There's this New, or- New Orleans-style restaurant in New Paltz. Uh, Up here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it has one of the coolest things. It actually has an absence fountain ah, in it. Okay. I know we're not going into the wine spectrum. No, no. But with chartreuse and absinthe, there's a whole big movement yeah. and all of that. What's the name of it? I'm terrible at names. <laughs> all right. I'm never asking you another question. All right. We're going to move to the second to last question. Professor Weiss, favorite all-time wine? Oh, jeez. I know there's a lot, and it's a hard question, but... Yeah, when I was a sommelier in Florida, you know, I used to have a chance to taste incredible uh, Cote de Nuit Pinot Noirs like Musigny and Richebourg. All the big houses. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So I'd say, you know, that's the, that's the holy Burgundy. grail. Yeah. The holy grail is still classic, you know, my commune I like is Chambon Musigny, the Grand Cru Musigny. I remember great Richebourgs, and I remember tasting Latache with my little test of vin. Yeah. But, you know, uh, for me... I've, some of my best experiences in my life have been peasant food with the right people and the right atmosphere. And it doesn't always have to be an elegant, expensive uh, wine or a fancy restaurant to have joy from wine. That is there's, a good answer. There's plenty. Most people answer with a trophy-type wine or an experiential wine, but every now and then I get an answer. Yeah. Any wine with good friends. Yeah, any wine with good friends. And it, it, it helps if that wine, again, is uh, is made from people who have a similar passion, if it could be organic or biodynamic, and and people feel like they're stewards of the earth and right. they're invested in the wine more than just for making profit from the actual wine. Itself. We've done a lot of shows on uh, natural, organic, sustainable wines. There was a raw wine fair in Brooklyn with hundreds of producers. A woman named Isabel Legero and brought it over from London. Mm, and it was right. nice to see how well attended it was on both sides, winemakers. And, yeah. You mentioned uh, currently drinking. I, there's a, a Spanish company called Paris Balta, and they have affordable uh, cava, champagne method products, and whites and reds. And 
What's the name of it? Pares Balta. Spell for me. P A R E S. Pares Balta. B A L T A. Okay. And not only organic, but female winemakers. Great. Girl power. Woman power. Well, we list the answers to this on our uh, website and Facebook page, so we'll make sure to do that. Jason, do you have a favorite all time wine? Or are you too uh, young for that? No, uh, actually, my favorite all time wine is actually one I read a paper on uh, when I was out in Napa Valley. It is. The uh, 2005 Doctor. Doctor, uh, D-O-C-T-O-R or D-R? That is correct. It is called The Doctor. Where is it from? Uh, it is from Atlas Peak is the AVA, and okay. it is from Stagecoach Vineyards, and it is self-proclaimed The Doctor. Uh, I actually interviewed the uh, winemaker, and he is actually holds a Ph.D. He is actually, I'm uh, sorry, an M.D., medical doctor, and uh, when he was actually, and during his residency, actually had the chief of police, his uh, a surgeon, actually helping him make this wine. There you go. It was actually quite Alas, the name. <laughs> the name is the I, doctor. <laughs> I have made wines with friends, and we've sourced grapes from the Stagecoach Vineyard. And I'm going to send you a bottle because I want to see what you think of it. That's okay. very kind. Thank you. All right, last question. Usually I ask our guests because they're in wine, wine retail, different you know areas and all that. Give me your best value wine around, a red and a white. You could go by type. You could be specific. You know, my yes. kid, Jason, they're going to a dinner. No, they no, want no. to bring a good I bottle, you. 15, I got you. 20 bucks. I think, I think um, fortify the uh, Fino and Manzanilla dry sherries, the LBV ports in white wines, uh, Vino Verde from Portugal or Muscadet from France. Great, great And in choice. reds, Rosso di Montalcino. From Italy. And Crow's Hermitage and Duros and uh, Nausas. Those, those, those are, are all good. good. Yeah. Those are all Give me one or two, Jason. Uh, Argentinian Malbec. Is a great uh, value. Yep, Cabernet Sauvignon from Chile. Uh, a Sauvignon Blanc from... Uh, New Zealand is always, I think, a great okay. value wine. And uh, on a Riesling from the Finger Lakes. Good calls. Yeah. Those are all good suggestions, and those are all wines that are delicious wines that are good value wines. We all agree with that, right? Yeah. All right, we're going to wrap up the show. If you have a question, wine happening, or event, hit me up at Sam at the Grape Nation. That's Sam at the Grape Nation. Follow us on Facebook at the Grape Nation. Follow us on Instagram at S. Ben Ruby. Twitter at Ben Ruby. Check out our new website, www.thegrapenation.com. That's www.thegrapenation.com. Chock full of show info and guests. We'll list uh, today's wine list all the great answers and professor tell me the best place to find out more about the culinary institute of america go to the website yes and that is <laughs> the culinary institute of america.com i'm guessing yes or google it right all right all right i want to thank our guest wine professor michael weiss and wine student jason dalkis delicus delicus um, from the Culinary Institute of America. Thank you to our engineer back in New York, Vitor, and everyone at the Heritage Radio Network. I'm Sam Ben Ruby, and you've been listening to The Grape Nation. for listening to Heritage Radio Network, food radio supported by you. For our freshest content and to hear about exclusive events, subscribe to our newsletter. Enter your email at the bottom of our website, heritageradionetwork.org. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at heritage underscore radio. Heritage Radio Network is a nonprofit organization driving conversations to make the world a better, fairer, more delicious place. And we couldn't do it without support from listeners like you. Want to be a part of the food world's most innovative community? Rate the shows you like, tell your friends, and please join our community by becoming a member. 
Just click on the beating heart at the top right of our homepage. Thanks for listening.